Hello everybody, this is Maniac for Bricks, and welcome to the Bizarre Lego Table debut at Brickford, New Jersey 2021. This is something that I've been working on for a long time, not only collecting, but also writing a book all about unusual, obscure Lego products, product lines, and anything I find more fascinating in the world of Lego, in the brand of Lego. So this is just a quick run through of some of the items I've brought for the display. I'll actually go back through in just a moment to explain each of these things since they don't have a lot of cards next to them. But just giving you a quick overview of what is here. I even have a TV running a lot of the old LEGO commercials for about an hour loop at a time. And the Sega Pico is actually set up in order to play it, but unfortunately won't be able to play during the public days because it's kind of far out from the, the stanchions. Might get too many hands on it. It's going to be hard to monitor. And then, since I'm on a corner, I do have a little bit on the other side of the table. And believe me, there's plenty more that I brought that I could have expanded upon, so hopefully in future shows, I can do that. So, to start things out, on this side, we have some of the larger LEGO packs, just a sampling of ones that they include extra stuff to them. Not necessarily LEGO bricks, even. It's just, you could buy the set on its own, or in some retailers, you'd be able to get some additional items with it. In the case of the UFO one up here, you have the Invader's Mask, which is a kid-sized mask to wear. has a couple of hole slots on the sides here to actually see through it. And it's actually been used in a couple of the commercials. And it's also nice having the box here. Yes, yeah, actually, it has a triangular area for where the bricks and instructions go. Unfortunately, with my copy of the set, I don't have any of the stickers added on here, but the stickers would have had a... Um, a thermal sensor, if you may. I don't know the exact term for it, but basically, as you would press onto it, it would change color. It's like a temperature-based kind of thing. And it still works. Like, I have other ones that have worked for, this is like almost 20 years old or so, and it still works. Actually, a, mo a little more than 20 years old. Then we have the Insectoids one down here, which, yeah, box has seen better days, but the, uh, the mask is still in there as well, again. Um, child-sized wearable mask has eye slots to look through it. I've actually tried wearing them once or twice and uh, didn't fit my face so well. Both of these also have um, elastic around the, the back of it, so it'll actually wrap around the face and, you know, make it easier to hold it. As for the model itself, um, this is complete, has all the parts and stickers needed for it. And the fascinating things about the Insectoids line, they introduced a couple of gimmicks on their own, separate from the UFO stuff, even though it's from around the same time. In here, this particular gem piece has a sticker that's magnetic. So this actually can attach to some of the old magnets, even the train magnets, and either polarity. So either way that the magnet is facing will help it like pick up things and move them around. You also notice a giant transparent neon green piece connected with the uh, dark gray there. This is actually a big light and sound system where it has two AA batteries you would use underneath it and three different buttons to press. It would continue playing them as long as you're holding the button down. And, uh, you know, taking off, landing kind of sounds to it. Unfortunately, with this copy of it, it doesn't run so well even with the batteries. So I just have it here to to stand on the table. Next up we have a Bionicle voice changer mask from 2006, no 2005. I've actually had this thing like for a long time. <laughs> Got it as a gift a long time ago and um, it theoretically still works. I could not actually open it up in order to exchange batteries for right now for the show but this works fine. Moving up here, we have another Bionicle item. This is the one of the several different water guns that was uh, partnered with Busby Toys. So Busby makes a lot of water guns and dart blasters similar to Nerf. And LEGO partnered with them for several years with different products for Bionicle, Mars Mission, and several other lines. Um, Aqua Raiders has one of my favorite water guns out of it. And this one in particular has um, two different ways of using the streams. So it'll either stream 
two out like this, just just facing whichever way it is, or there's a switch on the other side where it'll spin them as it goes through the air. It's already been opened, so yeah, it will lean a little bit out of the way, but it's all good. I've, I've used it, it works pretty well. We have another kind of water gun down here, which is already, yeah, I, I bought it sealed, I opened it up, I've already used it, but I'm like, ah, keep the, uh, the container with it as well. Um, this one from Atlantis, and it has a tube attached to it, so all the water will be stored in here. There's a little pocket clip on the back of it, so you can actually hook this onto you and, you know, whatever range you have, try to spray around with it. Every press of the trigger is one spray. This one is just a faux trigger, doesn't actually press. And then we have a ball blaster from Bionicle. This is another Busby product that it basically just recolored it for LEGO purposes, and they did it for several um, Bionicle products for a couple of years. There's different ones out there, like an orange one. I think it might be in a green one or something, or green mixed in with one of those. The ammo for this one in particular would have been green. They're small foam balls, roughly two inch in diameter. And I do have those, but I don't have them at the show right now. But I have actually tested it out before. Making our way around, we got the Star Attraction, the first LEGO video game ever made in 1995. A Sega exclusive called the Sega um, called Fun to Build. This is for the Sega Pico, which was a kid educational product at the time. It was used in some schools, but it was also a home product um, where it runs like a Sega Genesis, same kind of engine to it, but um, it has these special cartridges that would slot into place and has pages that would activate whatever level it's on usually as an activity page sort of thing. So you could go at any pace of any of these. We also have a large parrot up here from the one and only Kevin Hinkle, who's part of a Legoland pirate costume. The CD up here from Outer Space was part of an exclusive pack from UFO and Insectoids, and a very unusual disc in there. All the songs are not made specifically for the CD. They are actually already licensed songs. We have the TV running different LEGO commercials. We have a couple of the uh, electronics in here for Digital Blue, with the video camera, and I have one of the Power A uh, Wii remotes out here. The only one that was licensed. They had several colors of them, and this is the only one that was licensed with Pirates of the Caribbean. I still have it sealed in package. Oh yeah, we're running Galador. <laughs> Didn't actually bring the Galador figures, though I should have. I, I do have the egg, but I think I covered enough space on the table as it is. Down here, a little easy thing to skip, is the brick vacs. These are from way back in the day, and other versions have been made over time. Uh, the Brickadile is also another one in Duplo, but these are made for system, in which you would be able to roll them across the floor, and picking up bricks, and it scoops them up with these little teeth. The skateboard is actually a real skateboard. This is a promotional item for the LEGO Island 2 video game, The Brickster's Revenge, and just looks like the one from the video game, especially along the bottom. I love that about it. Still has the cling wrap to it, and this was available as a display item to use in stores as a promotion, and in some cases was part of a giveaway. And according to my sources, this was a thing that could have been picked up um, if you got a high score in one of the mini games in Lego Island 2. My assumption is that it was part of the um, the board park, the skateboarding mini game that was in there. That would make the most sense to me as to where you can rack up the most points and be skateboarding themed. So you gotta do tricks like the Dirty Brickster. Yeah, they actually had fun names with them too. Right now we have the Lego Ego Waffle commercial running on here. I don't think they ever had one for the fruit snacks as a commercial, but yes, Kellogg did also partner with Lego around 2005, 2006 or so, and had uh, Lego-themed food products. Unfortunately, you can't find these things anymore. You're lucky if you could find even a box of them, and even in, at that, you probably wouldn't actually find the uh, the food in them. They would, you would not be able to eat those. <laughs> like. 14 years later or so. 
I do have a couple of uh, display items here for the McDonald's Happy Meal toys, which I've covered before. Lego Ninjago movie and Lego Batman movie. Still testing audio, it seems. We also have a sign from the Lego Shell display um, when they used to have promotions running with Shell and little box sets so you could pick up at the gas stations. They had this sign in the window. I've had this one since I was a kid. And this one I've also had since I was a kid. This used to be a store display sign for the Lego Maniac. One of many Lego Maniacs. So, uh, this is the one I grew up with. I, did, I, I wasn't old enough for Zach. I just missed him, but I still love him. Next up here, we have Lego Primo, sometimes called Lego Baby. This is a infant line of products that will be available for infants, anyone that's like first couple of years, and very large pieces, larger than Duplo. This one is actually a Duplo adapter that they made in several colors. For some reason, yeah, they even had them actually say Duplo on them or having a Duplo adapter to it. So I could transition into those uh, later products, but they no longer make this line. Uh, there's also a couple of the sets that have a rattling brick with it. So this one being a dog shape and going appropriately with the dog-faced canister. Looking up here again, we have the Quattro line, which is also on the infantile side. Um, shortly run around 2004 or so, and again, really large pieces. But these are actually compatible with Duplo right out the gate. They don't need a separate adapter piece like those do. And there's only one or two figures ever released with those. These actually can adapt to, to Duplo like directly on the pieces, the way that Duplo can adapt to system. So it's very cool having that available and many different colors. This was the only truck-based thing that they had out of it as a vehicle that you could actually build on top of. And it does have sound, but mine, unfortunately, has been used before I got it, and you can't really hear the sound so well. I don't know a way to replace the batteries or anything like that. And then we have another pride and joy of the table, the Lego Duplo Brick Buster Super Truck. This one, even though I've showed about it before, is conditions getting a little, a little more out of time. I, I don't know where it was kept before, but it's, uh, the stickers have been peeling off for quite some time, even the one on the other side, getting some wear there. Um, and I believe I still have the box, I just have to add it back on here. But this was a recalled LEGO product. One of the, one of the few, if not the first, official LEGO product recalls. And basically the problem with it was that these wheels were not properly secured onto the metal axle in between them. Even though the metal axle was in place, the wheels had a tendency to pop off. If it was rolled around enough, they would unscrew and, and fall out of place. I know this because I have four copies of this. I actually had this happen to me about a month ago as of recording this. One of them popped off while testing it out. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of fantastic to finally see that work. Because I, I had one of those back in the day, but my parents followed with the recall. The bricks were totally fine. And there are still areas to build on top of it using bricks. This also has a tipping function, and the sticker here, I'm really trying to keep in good condition, even if I have to photocopy it like I did on the front, because that is probably the hardest part of it in any condition to find. A lot of these the stickers would pop off over time, it's fair, this is uh, at least 16 years old or so, but this one was the one that you had to use for the recall. So wherever I got this from, kept the truck never filed for it so there you go interesting as we move our way down here we have lego snap which was a short live line in 1998 where lego was already doing a lot of gimmicks and experimenting and this was a connects knockoff essentially connects was already a popular line in the late 90s and one of the closest competitors to lego so they developed this line to adapt to it it's basically an extension of technic so it is not full, I mean, some parts of it do work with Technic. Some of them are directly Technic pieces. That's even where you get like the axle piece with the stopper on the end of it. It has like a little bit of axle remaining. That's from here. And it's right there in the white. 
But yeah, there are actually pins used throughout the series. There's a lot of pinholes on pieces, so it is adaptable to other LEGO systems. They also have 9-volt motors used on several of the sets. And for right now, I don't have the batteries on this one, but the motor does run fine. I've already checked. A-OK -okay there. And the Blackmobile was one I actually had back in the day. I had a couple of the snap sets growing up, and even then I knew, eh, I only get so far with them as far as, uh, as far as compatibility. They didn't have a large parts variety with them, not a lot of colors, and you might have even seen it earlier or heard it earlier, I actually had the commercial running for it, which was kind of bizarre to say the least. <laughs> this is part of um, Casey's collection, so I greatly appreciate she contributed this for the table. This is one of several different LEGO Design by Me models. These are items that were available from LEGO. You could download a free program on their website at the time in the mid-2010s and be able to design your own LEGO product and then order it in the mail. So some of it I actually have here, the paperwork from one of the other models and breakdown of all the parts, like a pick a brick order kind of thing and even show in some of the instructions because they're a little wonky. If you've ever used LEGO Digital Designer and you use the automated instructions in the program, you know that they, not everything lines up perfectly. So you couldn't really edit that while doing the program. It just came up with it on its own and printed as such. So that's how it happened on there. But yeah, it could be literally any range of products because you made it yourself, designed by me. And in the middle here, we have Hero Factory's extension of Design by Me called Hero Recon Team. This was not involving the Design by Me digital designer program. This was done in browser on the LEGO website in which you could create your own Hero Factory figure. You basically use existing parts, so nothing was really new to the series. Only a couple of them that weren't used in the Hero Factory sets could be adapted to it according to the website, and only a couple different colors because, again, they're already produced for the regular sets. But there is an exclusive part in here, other than the instruction manuals and the box itself, and that's this Hero Factory crest piece. This is a specially molded piece in black and silver from half and half uh, marbling. The lime green core in the middle has already been available in one or two sets at that time, but it still fit with the Design by Me color scheme. Usually these would have been about $13 to pick them up on the website. And, you know, any of the Hero Factory 2.0 parts at the time would have been used for this line. And you did also get to name your character, add some stats onto them, and there was actually a parts limit. So you couldn't add full accessories or full everything on top of the character. So sometimes you could add shoulder armor, sometimes you had to add feet stuff, you know, like... It was, was kind of limited, but interesting nonetheless. And uh, I think I've covered everything on this table then. And uh, there's plenty of other stuff that I, again, brought, but did not have here for display. I think I covered enough ground as it is. And uh, hopefully this is fun for people to see throughout the day. I'm actually going to restart the video. It's about an hour loop. I'm going to restart the video when the public comes in, so it'll be something available in the background for people to use. I tried several different methods to try to run it a bit longer, but this is as best as I can do for now. And um, there we have it. So, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you a little preview as to some of the other stuff I could have brought onto the table. We have this Music Maker, which was a Duplo product and had all these little components. Some of them were already included in the set. Some of them were also used in other sets. There were other music makers at the time. And basically this thing would adapt different sounds on different modules so you can make your own instrumentations. This would have five different functions in this one particularly from rhythm, bass, melody, and harmony. And the middle one would just be a pressable button Anytime you press on this, it would activate the sound to go anytime in the song. There were also different songs or tunes that you could change using the top button here. And there was also a tempo change on the bottom. Definitely the kind of thing I would have had as a kid, not Lego related though. 
but I've had a similar thing growing up where it was motion activated. If you kept dancing or moving around it, it would continue the song or the tempo of it, which is kind of cool. But this is a Lego version of it, so it's even cooler. I also have here two different remote control cars, which unfortunately couldn't get to run for the show, at least for now, and that's okay. I can always keep them around for another time. This one is from LEGO Racers, and it looks virtually non-LEGO to me. <laughs> That's why I was, thought it would be fun to bring here, because it's... It, you couldn't recognize this was LEGO right off the gate. You could tell, like, oh, that looks like it's LEGO. It is. The entire thing is officially LEGO. Um, these are directly Technic pieces. There's a lot of Technic holes throughout this, kind of like in the Snap sets. And then this is really adapted from a larger set. It did not come with the wheels or anything like that. I just kind of added those on for convenience. Um, but this was part of a short-lived line called Spybotics. And they would have all these remote control cars. They'd have a CD based with them. And you could actually adapt that for spy missions. Uh, some of the cars had different functions to them and buttons and lights to, to work around them. They also had different accessories on the sides of them of how they would move, almost looking like battle box, honestly, in my opinion. And this is the remote in which it would have some of those functions unlocked, um, different channels and switches for things, and it just ran off of mostly AA batteries or AAA batteries from what I remember. I do have here a Spybotics camera. It was just a film camera that looks like a soda can. But again, I've already covered enough space on the table for... Uh, for this display. I would love to expand upon this in future shows because I know the, the, the main inspiration behind this was that I've seen other shows in which people would bring a vintage display several tables long and documenting different parts of LEGO history. Never have I seen somebody do something like this and I'm the kind of guy who has uh, the ambition to do that. So I was really happy with how this all turned out and a lot of people have enjoyed it. So far, uh, from the exhibitors, they've enjoyed looking through all this stuff, asking questions about it, and um, it's been fun for me to share about it. So, there we have our look at the Brick Fair, New Jersey Bizarre Lego Table debut. I'm very curious how it's going to do throughout the public day, and uh, it looks like the public's starting to come in. I see a lot more people walking in now, so... I'm going to go head over to my area for the public, and uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great day, and um, I'll talk to you all later. If you have any other questions about Bizarre Lego or any of this kind of stuff, let me know in the comments down below. I'll be happy to answer them.